your attention to the book of John chapter number five. And I want to look at something for about 15 minutes, uh, 20 the most, and I want to uh, let you go. Amen. When you found this, amen. Beginning with chapter, beginning with verse number one, you'll find these words recorded in the word of God. Now, after there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches in these lie a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first went in after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now for a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. The man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That sound better, don't it? Is the echo gone? All right, we good now. That's the thing about technology. I can be the pastor and the sound man at the same time. Yeah, Steve, y'all put an extra $50 on it. I ran the sound today. It's one part of this particular uh, uh, text that I want to read again. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been there for a long time in that case, in that position. He said to him, here's the question Jesus gave, raised to the guy. He said, will thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled, hear this, hear this young people, to put me in the water. While I'm coming, another step it down before me. I wanna talk about, oh, thank you baby, ain't nobody saying amen. <laughs> and I got five dollars for you right after church. Because Deacon Sean been sitting here, he ain't said, he ain't waved his hand and said, amen. Amen. I want to talk about excuses. E -e excuses. I'm not going to, I'm not going to raise uh, my voice because I think preaching 
in this season should be changing. I think that if it hasn't changed, it should be. The reason why? Because the world is changing. And the way that we was able to deliver the word then because of what the world presented, because there's literally been a shift in the lives of not just believers, but in the world. I believe that we have to change now, Sister Carpenter, our approach to explaining where we are and how we're going to be able to transition from where we are currently to a place where God will have us to be. So I want to just say that up front. See, some people, even when I began preaching some 25 years ago, preaching that if you, if you didn't change your voice, Brother Stokes, people will go home, Brother Stalin, and they'll say in the car, Pastor ain't did nothing today. <laughs> because preaching had to do with tone. It had to do with uh, shifting and elevation. And, and, and the truth is, you didn't even have to be saved to feel nothing. I preach funerals now with people that don't go to church, never been to church, and, and you'll catch them outside and say, man, you, yeah, I don't go to church, but boy, you show pre It's not that they really understood, but it's the energy behind it. Y'all listen to what I'm saying? Y'all hear me now? Hear me? And, and so, and even Deacon Moore, if the preacher, Mom Brown, didn't say too much of nothing, but if he knew how to transition to Calvary. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. <laughs> if he just knew how to get to one Friday. Mother Stamps, you come from a preaching family. You, you understand what I'm saying? That, that could literally just shift the church. Y'all hear me? But then you can go home and still be empty. Why? Because you were emotionalized. That, that's no different than people that drink and smoke. You can only stay high for so long. See, all the high people didn't say something right there. Renato, he knew what I was talking about there. <laughs> you, you ain't going to stay high forever. And that's why, that's why even, that's why even after, after, you know, when people grieve, you know, they talk about we're going to drink and we're going we gonna to smoke for the loved one. No, you ain't doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself. Y'all see what I'm saying here? Y'all see what I'm saying? And so I want to change my approach to, to preaching just for a while because I really want, at the end of the day, for you to get it. Because after all of the shouting, and I love to shout, after all of the hollering, I love to, to hoop a little bit. Y'all get what I'm saying? And another reason why I, I'm, I'm changing my, my flow uh, 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 of, of preaching is because I ain't got the same energy. Y'all get what I'm saying? I used to, y'all know when I first came, I wasn't this big. Y'all hear me? But Jodine kept calling me to that kitchen. Do you want some more? Y'all hear what I'm saying? So I want to talk about excuses today uh, because I believe that that is the main thing that's going to hold not only the church, not only us collectively, but also us individually, that's what's going to hold us back. Look at your person and say, excuses. This is Jesus, this is Jesus, this is Jesus in John chapter 5. And it's a familiar passage and a lot of stuff make people happy 
when they read this text. I heard it, you know, even when I was reading the text, Rosetta, even when Jesus told the man to rise up, take up your bed, and walk, people started hollering and all that. But see, there's a problem in, in real tension in this particular text, and it had to do with the brother that really you and I can relate to. We can relate to this brother, uh, uh, Dwayne, in chapter 5, because the Bible says that Jesus shows up, uh, the Bible uh, says, at a pool that is called Bethesda. But Bethesda is, it is translated to meaning the house or the place of mercy. Are y'all in here with me? It is translated to being the house or the place of mercy. Mercy is what used to tear up churches. When you start talking about the grace and the mercy of God. Yeah, it's mercy that Lamentations, the book of Lamentations suggests that his mercy is new every morning. Come on, y'all talk back to me in here. That, 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 and maybe you're not shouting over that because you really don't understand what mercy is. See, I want to tell you something. When you get up and when your eyes open up in the morning, your mouth should just open as well and tell the Lord, thank you. Y'all still quiet in here. Let me try it again. When you wake up in the morning, if just by chance... Tomorrow, Monday morning, whatever time you're touched with this finger of love, whenever your eyes open up to see another day that you've never seen before, don't thank them just because your house is intact. Don't just thank them because your car is still in the driveway. Don't just thank them because the kids didn't call with no incident or accident, but you ought to thank them for the mercy of God. Mercy of God is the opposite. I told you a while ago, the mercy of God is the opposite of the grace of God. The grace of God deals with God and his favor, but the mercy of God deals with God and his forgiveness. In other words, somewhere between the time you went to bed and the time that he decided to wake you up, he chose to forgive you. <laughs> Now, now, the only folk that's going to talk back to me in here is some folk that realize they saw some stuff that they shouldn't have done. Come on in here, talk to me in here. See, this ain't the time to turn to your neighbor and touch three people, but this is the time to say, it ain't my mother, it ain't my father, it ain't my sister, it ain't Ray Ray and them. Come on, talk to me. But it's me, y'all still quiet in here, standing in the need of prayer. It, listen, th they showed up. This pool, it is the house of mercy. In other words, it's the place of forgiveness. It's the place of another chance. Because that's really all mercy is, is God, of not of a second chance or a third chance. But every day that you've been alive, you have been a recipient of the mercy of God. Can I preach it here the way I feel? Y'all quiet in here because... Because some of, some people in here, Mother Carpenter, I ain't talking about you, but see, some folk in here, they believe that they don't need the mercy of God no more because you can't do some of the stuff that you can do, used to, used to do 10 and 15 years ago. But, but the truth of the matter is, it's not always about an act, but sometimes it's a thought. See, sin ain't always dropping it like you're hot. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Y'all quiet in here. Ain't no need running around looking at them now talking about that's a shame what they wearing. The truth of the matter is the only reason why you wearing it because you done got too old now. Y'all in here with me? Come on, y'all talk to me in here. How many need the mercy of God? Because there are some things that I didn't say, but I thought it. Come on, talk to me here. There, 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 there are some things that I didn't expose, but I felt it. 
Y'all get what I'm saying? That's, that's why the Bible says all, not y'all, but all have sinned and haven't fallen short of the glory of God. Even on our good day, we're still like filthy rags in his sight. There is none that's righteous. No, not one. And if you showed up today, you ought to showed up thanking God for the mercy of the Lord. That's why Mississippi Mass Choir used to sing this song. It was your grace and mercy that brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. Can I tell you, you're not a lie because you kept the mask on so tight. You're a lie not because you sanitized your hands on and on. You're a lie today because the Lord seen fit to allow your golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. You ought to just take a moment and forget about who's here and forget about who's not here and forget about the organ. You ought to just think Thank God for the mercy. <laughs> the mercy, Lord have mercy. The mercy of God. <sighs> Lord have mercy. I'm trying to hold him with the sound, but I feel God right now. <laughs> the mercy of God. See, some people only shout on his favor, but there's some of us here that say, if God don't do another thing for me, look at somebody right now and tell them, if he don't pay another bill, come on here, he's already done enough. I'm not here for no gift. I'm not here for no favor. I'm shouting because I need forgiveness. And we ought to thank God, Shay, that his mercy, David said, is everlasting. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. I got to keep moving. They're located at the place of mercy. The pool of mercy. And while they were there, chapter 3, I mean, verse 3, rather, suggests that there was a multitude of impotent folks. That, that, that means there was a great company of disabled people. Disabled simply means that you need somebody else to be able to live, maintain, move. You need the company of assistance. When you're disabled, you need somebody to carry you, somebody to push you, somebody to feed you, somebody to dress you. These people that were here at the house of mercy, they needed help. Impotent. Blind, hot, withered, and they were all waiting for the moving, here it is, or the stirring of the water. Y'all gonna like this text. I love it already. Something was wrong with all of them. I don't want y'all to miss that. Something was wrong with all of them. Look at the person next to you and tell them, you too. <laughs> Something as good as you look, as faithful you have been, there is something that's wrong with you. <laughs> I, I, I know you the one that like to run around and point the finger at everybody else and, and suggest what everybody else's problem is, but the truth of the matter is, you know that there is something that's wrong with you. I, I know you gossip. Come on, talk to me here. I know you give everybody the update on what's going on in everybody else's house, but the truth of the matter is, if we came to your house, there is something that's wrong with you. I know cities like to point at other cities, been to harbor this, but I don't care how big their city is, how many people moving there, there is something. I 
Y'all, y'all gonna help me here? Just look at somebody real quickly and tell them something wrong with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I wish, I wish I would, I wish I would have, I wish I would have uh, been able when I first came. I wish I was a little bit more mature then. Because anytime a pastor first gets to a church, there's always going to be a group of people ain't normal to tell you about everybody else. <sighs> they tell you who ain't faithful. They tell you who don't tithe. They tell you who raise all the hair. But if you just keep living long enough, you'll find out that the same people they were talking about, they just as worse off. Yeah, they made time, but they got hell on the inside. Y'all quiet in here. Come on, y'all help me preach in here. Come on, come on, turn to somebody and just tell her something wrong with both of us. Look at Steve, don't even want to say nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. Come on, look at somebody else again and tell them there is something wrong with the both of us. That's why I showed up to church. I showed up to church because I, I need God to deal with what's wrong in me. I, I, I don't like the song they sang. I think they ought to change the words. It's to say, search me. Uh, yeah, and then it's to say, if you find. No, it ain't if Renato. It's when you find something that should not be. Take it out and strengthen me. I want to be whole. I want to be right. And there's somebody here today that want to get on another level with God. You ought to lift your hands and say, God, deal with me. Work with me. Clean me up. All the people that showed up to this pool, they all had something that was wrong with them. Y'all hear me in here? That's why I want y'all to know, don't, don't, don't put me on no stage. Y'all come on top of me. Don't, don't, put no, don't, put no, don't put no camera on me. Don't, don't magnify me. Don't glory in this position. Because I admit there is something. That's wrong. You know, the Bible said we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That, that means you have not conquered sin until you die. Lord have mercy. Can, can, I, can I say that again? You have not arrived until the Lord gets you out of here. These people that had something wrong with them, they were there and they were just waiting. <laughs> it's right there in the text. They were waiting for the moving or the stirring of the water. They were waiting for uh, the water to be troubled. Yeah, yeah. The text uh, in verse number four says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. All the angel did, it ain't big, it ain't deep. The angel just got in the water. And the angel's presence in the water uh, put a, a, a healing in the water that whosoever stepped in first, they got healed. And really to top this whole story off, this brother, he's been, listen to this, he's been, at, he's been in this condition for 38 years. It amazes me, it amazes me about people that always talk about, I can't believe they the same, they still the same. They, they still smoking. They still drinking. Not that they want to, but they could be like this man waiting. Y'all missed that thing. They, they, they could be waiting for the stirring. They could be waiting for the troubling. That they could be waiting to get in. But but 
but you shout over this brother that's been in the situation for 38 years. Y'all really don't like me today. I'll try it over here. This brother has been in this situation. He has been disabled for 38 years. The woman that had an issue of blood has had that issue for 12 years. The woman in Luke chapter 13 that was bent over, she was bent over for 18 years. Why are we so hard on people that we know in church when we can shout about people in the Bible that's been bent over, that has been bleeding, and now at a pool for 38 years? Why you so hard on each other, but you're not hard on these people you never met? Are y'all catching what I'm saying? Why you so long suffering with people in the Bible, but you ain't got no patience? with people in church that's struggling. Lord, this is getting good to me today. Why, 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 why you say amen dealing with these people, these biblical patriots, but people that you know been in church struggling, you know they've been singing and they've been smoking, you know they've been ushering and cussing. I ain't talking about you, Jones. And you patient with them, but you want everybody else to go to hell. <laughs> you forgive the preacher on TV. <laughs> but the pastor that you serve under, you serve with. Lord have mercy. The angel went down at a certain season. And here's the crazy thing about a certain season. They never knew what time the angel was going to show up. The angel just showed up at a certain season, a certain time. That only God and the angel knew. Hallelujah. You, you don't know who's in our church right now that's waiting, Dawkins. You, you, you don't know who's come in here disabled. And they want to be healed. They want to be delivered. They want to be saved. They want to be restored, but they're waiting. They're, they're waiting for the stirring. They're waiting on the moving. They're waiting on the troubling. In a game, but waiting. In the streets, but waiting. Strung out, but waiting. Lying, but waiting. Whoremonger, but waiting. Come on, talk to me here. Got a bad attitude, but waiting. For the moving of the water. Jesus shows up during their waiting. <laughs> Listen at the text. <laughs> and there was a certain man, we don't know him. We, we don't know his background, Shay. We, we don't know which neighborhood he grew up in. We don't know if he's like 
Bartimaeus that hung out in Jericho. We don't know if he's, if he's like a Joel that, that lived and grew up in a city called us. We don't know but one thing. We know that he's been having a situation for 30 years. We don't know his name, but we know his problem. Ooh. Did y'all hear what I just said? There, there are some people that don't know you, but they know your struggle. We don't know nothing about him. In fact, we really don't know his age too much, but we know he's grown because he's been dealing with it for 38 years, so we know at least one thing, he's at least 38 years old. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing we really know. He could be 50. He could be 70 like Dawkins. <laughs> you on your way? You ain't there yet. You, you, you climbing. We know he's not 14. We know he's not 18. We know he's not nine. He's a grown man that has a disability. We don't even know if he's getting a check. We don't know, Jones, if he's at that mailbox on the first or the third. That's some of y'all favorite days of the month. <laughs> some of y'all don't go nowhere on the first. And most of y'all get it, it come in around 10.50 that night. Before when you wake up, is there. We don't know about this man's situation. We don't know, rather, his background. We just know one thing. A certain man had an infirmity for 38 years. Can I just tell y'all something real quick? Y'all don't want to tell y'all neighbor what I'm getting ready to say. I know uh, some of y'all been knowing each other for a long time. I know some of y'all think y'all know me after five years. But can I tell you something? You don't know me like that. They run around, Renato, and they think they know you. No, you know my struggle. You, you know my disability. You, you know my pain, but you don't know I'm waiting. You know that I've been strung out. You know. All of that, but you don't know. I've been sitting here waiting for the stirring, for the troubling. Oh, the water. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Jesus shows up and the text says in verse number six, here's a shout. Rosetta, me and you shout by ourselves. Verse 6 says, ain't nobody here but me and you, Rosetta. Listen to what verse 6 says. When Jesus saw him lie. Rosetta didn't want to shout, I'll try you, Sister Glenn. Out of all of that disability, Jesus saw him. All the hurt that you've experienced, Sylvie, Jesus saw you. Anytime you read in the Bible, let me teach it before I preach it to my, check this out. Anytime Jesus sees you when it said he saw you, it literally means he had compassion. Hallelujah. When he see you cry, he has compassion. When he sees your disability, he has compassion. When he sees you hurting, he has compassion. He's not like you and I. We can look at each other and go on a, across the street and go on our way. But when he lays eyes on us, he has compassion. He has 
has compassion. I, I, I remember, I remember when this certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and the Bible says he fell among thieves, and they stripped him and ripped him. Uh, of his raiment and they left him lying in his own blood and a certain priest, the preacher showed up, looked at him and he went to the other side of the streets. All of a sudden a Levite looked at him and goes to the other side of the street but a certain Samaritan when he saw him the Bible says he had compassion. He stopped to see about him. What I love about it is, what I love about it is to my, that the Lord won't leave you the way he found you. What, what I love about it, he don't just see us, but when he sees us, he moves in on us. Hallelujah. 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 He, he saw him. And, and he knew, I'm reading the Bible, he, he, he knew that he had been in this uh, condition a long time. And he says to him, will thou be made whole? Is that Kathy? What he's really saying is, do you want to get better? That, that, that's really what he's saying. Do you? want to get better. He says, do you want to be made whole? D -d whole. That, that means, do you want to be put back together? I want the young people to listen to this. This is what I shared uh, with your man when I was out of town the other day. I, I just started uh, just really asking God to minister to me because I, I really believe that a lot of young people are unable to get better because they adapt to the philosophy of this man. All right, y'all didn't catch it. Here it is. Jesus says, y'all know Jesus, don't you? Y'all quiet like y'all ain't heard of him. Jesus says, Dwayne, listen to this. He says, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be better? Do you want to be put back together as a whole? The brother says to Jesus, he says, he was respectful. Now, I want, I want to throw that out. He was a respectful young man. He, he, he wasn't talking slang. He, he wasn't talking disrespectful. He says, right in verse number seven, the impotent man answered him, sir, he has some good home training. He said, sir, he said, I have no man to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Look at your neighbor and say, that is an excuse. I told Mackenzie the other day, the worst thing you can do, this is the one thing that I learned growing up. You shouldn't grow up and don't learn nothing. Like there's some people, see people always talk about young people, you know, the kids need, but there's some old fools. Some of these, some of the, and check this out. This ain't no kid in this text. He grown. Y'all hear me? He should have a lease in his name. He should have a car. Come on, talk to me in here. He should be getting him a check. Y'all told each other another I mean, listen, be truthful with you. There's more, if we want to just do a whole argument in the word of the Lord, there were some more sharp young people in the Bible. Shack rap, me, Shack and Abednego. They weren't grown. They were about 16 years old. And they said, if God don't deliver us, we know one thing, him able. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, this is what I learned. That if you ever going to mature, you have to take responsibility. And hear this real quick. I'm at the point now in life that I don't care who get mad, because guess what? When I was a kid, my pastor ain't get, he didn't care that I, I, I was upset that he was saying what he was saying. Listen, Jesus says in John chapter 8, ye should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And when you get set free, you'll be free indeed. You must in this life take responsibility. You cannot continue to shift the blame on other people. Listen at this text. He says, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. Even though that may have been what happened, that ain't what Jesus asked. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? That is a yes or a no answer. Yeah, I do want to be made whole. Been in this situation 38 years, absolutely. But he's talking about every time I, every time the angel go down and you know, uh, you know, what happens is, you know, you know, somebody knocks me out the way. And, and I got one problem with, with the brother, a couple problems. Number one, Jodine, because he ain't answered the question yet. That's the first problem. But the second problem I got, if you don't know when the angels are going to show up, I tell you if it was me, I'll have one leg in. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing to him. Mm -mm. No, I've been in this situation too long. Come on here. I I'm going to have an elbow in there, a half of my butt in there. Come on, talk to me here. You ain't going to knock me out the way. Tell somebody, get in position. That's why you keep missing out, losing, because you're not ready. And check this out. You ain't got time to get ready. You got to be ready. It was a woman that went to Tabernacle Baptist Church that when the preacher was preaching, the late Dr. Reverend Calvin Perry, every time he'd take a deep breath, it was a woman like you just to start moaning, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Yeah, but, but, but we asked her one day, I hope y'all ain't related. We asked her one day, why you keep moaning every time uh, Pastor Perry, Dr. Perry, takes a breath? She said, because I was asking the Lord to help him. <laughs> because Pastor Perry can't preach. You're making me think I can't preach. Because every time I take a break, you start to moaning like that woman in Fort Wayne. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Help him, Lord, help him. No, I'm preaching good this morning. Turn your neighbor and say, you got to get in position. See, there she go. See? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Can I preach? Tell me, am I doing all right, mama? You got to get in. You from down south somewhere, ain't you? Yeah, that ain't no Midwest mom. I wish I could get all my mothers just to do that at the same time. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Sister Carpenter, come on, try it. I ain't heard you sing in five years. Moan, come on. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> I got the clothes, y'all. I got to get out of here. I got the clothes. Tuma ain't afraid to say now. Tuma don't care if it's five people in church. 
at 11 a.m., it's time to start singing. Shine. Listen, you got to get in position. Stop with the excuses. Do you or don't you? It's totally up to you. Why you ain't working? You know white folk don't hire nobody. Every establishment in town, Charmaine, say now hi. Ain't nobody these folk on Clyde, they need some help in these restaurants. They'll hire a dog if he can take an order. Kenzie, the mess around to quit that job. She said, I said, why you quit? She said, they kept scheduling me to work. I said, I, I thought that was the point. <laughs> so I ain't going to be in there all day. I thought the point was, Dwayne, to get hours. Now you get hours, it's too many. It's always an excuse. You know, college ain't for everybody. No, it ain't for you because you lazy. Because you don't want to take out the time to fill out the app. Like, I'm tired of folk running around here with excuses. Either you want to do it or you don't. I was coming, but no, you on time for work. You on time for the football game. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. You on time for everything. Just say, I did not want to come. Like Charmaine, she ain't want to come to church today. She just here because I kept calling. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You know, just be, be, be true. What's with all the excuses? Jesus says, do you want to? Do you want to be better? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want your life to be put back together? And he, 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 Dwayne, he shifts the blame to somebody else. Every time I try, Somebody pushes me out the way. And here's the, other, here's the other complaint, too. Don't miss this. He says, he says, there's nobody here to pick me up. He said, ain't nobody here to put me, to, ain't nobody here to carry me. Maybe this is the season of your life where God says to you that you have to get to a place where you can mature and get to the place where you stop depending on other people to carry you. The good thing is, the good thing is, Margaret, Mackenzie quit her job and she didn't ask me for nothing. Yes, yeah, if you're going to give an excuse, be able to stand on your own two feet. Don't give an excuse and try to blame other people. No, it's a decision, a conscious decision that you have made. Do you want to be made whole? J Jesus says, brother says, he says, I don't have nobody when the water is trouble to put me in the pool, but while I'm coming, another stepping down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Jesus says, listen, you're talking about the water. I'm talking about the question. He says, what the water can do, <laughs> I can do that with my voice. I, 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 I can just speak a word. Y'all hear me? And the people that's still standing here on this porch waiting for the stirring of the water, he says, I can just speak a word directly to you. 
and they'll still be here messing around for a whole nother year because there is power and there is authority in my voice. Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. He says, in this season, you're going to have to take responsibility, and you're going to have to put some personal work in. In other words, it ain't going to be them, it's going to be you. If you flunk this semester, it ain't the teacher, it ain't who in the class, it's you. I mean, what else do you want? They gave you a computer. I mean, you ain't paying no bills. You ain't have to work 12 hours to make sure that the rent is paid. All you have to do is study. Look at your neighbor and say, it's on you. They don't like me today, Norm. It's all right. I I'm telling you, they don't like me today. But guess what? It's on them. Ain't no need blaming. I used to do that. When I, used to, I used to do this a lot of time. Don't laugh at me, though. But I used to always say every time I, you know, would get in trouble at school, I, I used to try to play with the counselor. And, and I used to say stuff all my life. I used to say, well, my, my, I don't know my real daddy. I used to, I used to say, I ain't know my real daddy. <laughs> So, because I, I seen something on TV on Oprah when I was a kid. So, I just said, I'm going to use that too. I don't know my real day. And, and I, I'm 42 years old right now. And I just stopped using that, believe it or not, about two years ago. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And then you think about it. I mean, if I met him right now at 42, he got to be 65, 70. What we going to do? Play catch? What are we going to do? Go play baseball together? I'm fat, he overweight on a cane. Listen, the excuses are over. You are who you are because that's who you want to be. You ain't no hoe because your uncles were rolling stones. You a hoe because that's what you choose to do. I ain't calling your uncle a hoe or nothing. That kind of just slipped out, to be honest, though. <laughs> Lynette said, he was that now. He was. He was. Like I said, make a decision. You don't have to be what you see. You be what you desire. Y'all get what I'm saying here? I don't want to be like Jones. So whatever I see Jones do, I do the total opposite. <laughs> Make up in your mind what do you, you want to be lame, you want to be impotent, you want to lie to pool, you want to depend on other people, you want to blame other people for not caring you, for not placing you, for not positioning you to get your healing. Go ahead. Jesus said, you want to be made whole. Yes. Can you make it possible? And y'all stop accepting excuses from our young people. You don't have to shoot. You don't have to. I told my mother when I first got my first apartment, I said, I'm going to try to move in a year. She said, why? I said, because the people next to me, they sell drugs. She said, you just don't buy none. She said, you ain't got to move. She said, the, she said, the Parnells next door to us, they've been selling drugs for about 20 years we've been living next door. I said, the Parnells are drugs? She said, yeah, you don't know because we ain't bought none. You ain't got to move. What you moving for? The one ain't just don't go get you no blunt. Stay right there. You know what I'm saying? Stop making excuses if you want to be in the street just say you know what I was born a thug thug in my DNA that's who I am 
Don't try to blame it on other people in your family because you had an opportunity to make a decision that that is not who I want to be. I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. You can grow up in church. You can live for God. You can love God. You can honor him. You can give. You can support ministry. You can be in church if that's what you choose to do. Is that, is that, is that, oh, did I just baptize? 70 what? He done forgot. 71. You up there somewhere, huh? <laughs> he said between 70 and 75, I'm in there somewhere. He chose to make a decision. He ain't running around talking about, well, I'm, I done got old now. now. No, no, no. You, you can be old and in hell, too. Old folk go to hell. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Y'all saying just because they lie here before us and they 65, 75 years old, that don't mean they going to heaven. Old folk die and go to hell. You just think they ain't smoking no more. Because <laughs> they ain't drinking no more. Come on, talk to me. Because you ain't, you ain't dropping it. Come on, talk to me here. Don't mess around and be old in hell. How you in with a walker in hell? Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I mean, Sylvia, what that look like? You in a walker walking through hell on a walk. Come on, talk to me here. We think it's just young people. No. No. Some bit mama in hell. There's some bit mamas in hell. <laughs> if you don't confess. Y'all laughing, but it's the truth. People that go to heaven are believers. Ain't no unbelievers walking around in heaven. When, when, when truth of the matter is, some of us have been in church our whole lives, we barely making it. We barely crossing up in there. Y'all hear me? And you think people that don't love God, against God, just because they done got old, God said, you know what, you done got old now. Just, just come on. <laughs> come on now. You, you, done, you, you done got up in age now, so just, you know, just come on. And, you know, you ain't have to confess. You done smoked and drank your whole life, done party, cuss after the food, beat on your wife. You done did everything. Come on, talk to me here. So just, but just come on. No, no. You must confess with your mouth as well and believe in your heart that God raised his son Jesus from the dead. And the Bible says, somebody shout the Bible says, thou shall be saved. Verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole took up his bed and walked. And on that same day was the Sabbath. Verse 14, I'm done. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. He found him in church. Y'all missed that thing. And he went up to him and said, look here. It's right there in verse 14. No, I ain't made it up. Jesus found him in church. And went to him and said, now look here now. Thou have been made whole. Now sin no more. Or something worse is going to happen. <laughs> I preach today better than y'all talking back. He, 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 he went up to him and said, now look here, let me tell you something now. Now you walking now. <laughs> He said, no, now look here now. A few days ago, you had to be carried 
Y'all hear me? He said, now you done got your walk. He kind of, I, I, he kind of said, let me tell you how he really said, don't forget where you come from. <laughs> don't forget now, you ain't been walking all your life. You had, come on, come on, come on, little You've been carried for 38 years. He said, now you mess around. Mess around if you want to. And something worse is going to happen. But don't miss the indication of what the Lord said. He said, now don't see him no more. Which really suggests his condition was a result of sin. Somebody going to give me some dinner money because I preach today. Now y'all ain't saying nothing. It's right there. He said, Sin, I know, that's why I'm the pastor. I hear goods. Y'all hear what she said? She said, you know, I ain't never heard of that. You ain't never see it that way. Because that's why you got me here. Don't fire me. Keep me here. I got some more next week. He said, it was a result of sin. He said, don't mess around. Don't do what you did before. You hear me? See, and, and some people that said, Lord, if you get me out of this. You ever said that, Stokes? Lord, if you get me out of this. I'll serve you. <laughs> Come on here. And the next time somebody came with a blunt, you said, just one more, just one. Just one, I ain't going to do, just one time. Ain't, no, Jesus said, all right, young man. All right. I see my young boys. All right now. He, he said, listen now. Don't go do it again. He said, I, listen. You got out this time. Go to jail again if you want. Come on, that's my daddy talking. Come on, get out. That's my daddy talking. Go mess around and go downtown again. Come on. I heard my mom and you, uh, Sister Glenn, you're going to be down there. Y'all go say, listen what he said. That's that, that, listen, with all of his excuse, listen what Jesus said. The whole he said he found him at the church. He said he found him at the church. He said, now, 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 now listen, before, before this benediction, let me talk to you. And let me tell y'all something. You better start talking to these young folks. I, I, listen, I'm looking for old folk now, some bit mamas and, 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 and some old men in church that say, come here. Come here. Let me tell you something. You see, see now we done got to the point we don't want to say nothing to these kids, and these kids are cussing you out and their mamas are joining on. Y'all hear me? See, when I used to get checked at church in Sunday school, I was afraid for the teacher to go tell my mama. But these kids now, they'll tell you, and I'm telling my mom and my uncle. You hear me? That's why these teachers can't do nothing with them because you're going up there clowning. You know your child a mess. You can't control them at your house. You don't believe that he walked out the class and you ain't know where he was at for nine hours. Tell him, no, my boy ain't did that. And he called me at the house right now. He just said, where, where Jimmy at? I don't know where Jimmy Jimmy, you've been gone for about two or three hours. No, quit blaming other people. That's why, that's why our kids messed up, because parents don't want to take no responsibility. I used to say all the time, Mackenzie, at least they'll never do this. I don't know what they'll do. <laughs> My mama couldn't believe half of the stuff that I did. The only thing you can tell what your child will and won't do is while they're at your house. But as soon as they leave that door, 
Y'all ain't talking to me in here. He says, thou have been made whole. Now listen, young man, don't sin no more or a worse thing is going to come. I'm done. Stop making excuses. Either you want to get better or you don't. And let me tell y'all this last thing, I'm done. Y'all hear me? I, I slept all day yesterday. I'm wide. I'm wide. Uh -huh. I'm wide. Y'all don't have to be telling. You know what, Jones? A lot of people say every time the pastor gets into something, they be like, well, he young. No, I'm grown. And I know that word. You hear me? Listen. Much given, much required. That just means this. It means this, my star, when you know better, you do better. <laughs> Putting excuses, excuses, excuses. All right, I'm done. Everybody here that's saved without a shadow of doubt, don't try to leave, I got an announcement to make. If you say without a shadow of doubt, I want you to lift those hands. Hallelujah. Mother Carpenter, put your hand up now. <laughs> put your hand up. We baptizing 70 year olds now, put the hand up. If you're saved, hallelujah. Would y'all look around and make sure every hand is, 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 is lifted? Shay, stand up and look around st up through this house. Make sure everyone is saved. If you're not saved, you want to give your life to Jesus today, listen, I'm telling you, today is a great day to be on the lower side. And I believe that he's able to save even right now. You want to be saved, you ain't got to come to me. Just stand where you are. And I'll walk you through the plan of salvation. And guess what? We'll baptize you. You can be a part of the Lord's church. You want to be saved. You want to be baptized. Just stand where you are. Hallelujah. Is there one? Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for all this here. Amen.